Everybody Hates Rand is a Wheel of Time podcast that will contain spoilers for all 14 books. So if you're anti-spoiler, pause this, read all 14 books, and come back. We'll be here. Waiting. Our title is a joke and is meant to be taken as such. In the context of this podcast, everybody refers to us and our cat. You are free to feel however you want about Rand, who is a fictional character. Don't DM us. The world is a mess, dark one stretching out his hand. The dragon's reborn, the fire's been fanned, but everybody hates Rand. Everybody hates Rand. Everybody hates Rand. But so then I had to live with the knowledge that there was a dead mouse in the garage somewhere and also a cricket and that maybe they were like chilling. Yeah. I don't think crickets eat dead things. I don't think so. But either. But I mean, I mostly was like, does the cricket know that one of its fellow quote unquote vermin? Yeah. Is dead in this space? How psychologically horrifying would that be for the cricket? Cricket's just like, yeah, doing this little cricket thing. And then it's like, dear God. He's like, do, 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 just chilling in the ecosystem that is Cricky's garage. It's very big. (laughs) Three cars, baby, and tons of tools that no one ever touches. Because Chris is not a handyman. Classic. (laughs) Just lots of spiders and me, a cricket. And oh, what's that? It's CSI Garage. (laughs) Yeah, maybe the cricket is a detective. The cricket. <laughs> the cricket is bones. The game's a foot. The game's a foot. That's what I was hearing it say when it, I yeah. walked in Sherlock and cricket. out. It was still going. Good for it. Hours later. Um, Sherlock cricket is going to be the funniest part of this episode because, boy, woof. Uh, this is Everybody Hates Rant, uh, your friendly neighborhood Wheel of Time podcast. I'm Emily Jushaw. I'm Sally Goodger. I should clarify that we are recording this the day before a trailer for the Wheelie Time show is supposed to drop. So if you're wondering whether our quote unquote reaction will be in this um, episode, it won't be. Sorry, just um, probably whatever we felt we put on social media at the time. Uh, I feel like we keep promising we'll talk about it one day, but really when there's something substantive to talk about, I think we will. Until then, we have to linger with Egg. I know, it's hard to be on Team Egg these days. And by these days, I mean in books 7 through maybe the end of the series. She still has her good moments, and I think as we've talked about many times, there are some really, like, satisfying and interesting moments in Egg's rebel uh Aes Sedai arc and as she is developing as a politician and as a leader that can be really mm-hmm. enjoyable to read about and I do understand that a part of why those moments are enjoyable and satisfactory is because uh there's a great deal of lead up to them mm-hmm. that said the lead up isn't very fun to read and Chapters like these, we read three chapters, which doesn't help, but the next two chapters are very long. Um, these three chapters could have been cut down to one. God. That's a hot yeah. take. Um, very poorly edited. Like, I feel like I could just go through these chapters and talk about what I would have cut. Um... Well, first of all, we had a we have a little weird time travel sequence. Yeah, where the, <laughs> it took me till chapter three to be like, so this is before the. What? I don't. I don't think. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> we are embarking on. <laughs> um, we're embarking on soon. Soon. Um, the part of the series where the timelines do not match up. Yeah. I think right now they still technically match, except for this one discrete moment. Because at the end of book six, you may recall, one of our many epilogue sequences was Egg poking her head into 
Moby Dean's tent and being like, oh no, she's escaped. And of course, Moby Dean being helped out of her captivity by Halima slash Arangar slash Balthamel. I'm going to do that every time. It'll be super fun. Listing all their names. Um, so either that matched up in that that happened the night after Dumai's Wells, or that happened a week and a half after Dumai's Wells. Yeah. Whatever it is. And really, it's impossible to say, but I'm going to take that from now on through the end of this book. The timelines are pretty synced up. Okay. I guess. I'll accept that. The entire time, it just, like, everyone in these chapters was talking, like, the kidnapping of the Dragon Reborn and Dumai's Wells was simply an impossibility that would never have happened. Well, I guess the I said I don't know about it. I don't know. It just was, like, really and, blowing my mind. And I think we are led to believe that the wise ones do know about it, so it has at least happened after do you might as well, because they're like, I don't know, they have just some like weird behaviors, but basically they're lying to Egg or omitting the truth, and I'm not sure why. It's one of the greatest frustrations of my life that all these women who can just talk to each other every night in their dreams don't tell each other relevant information. Yeah, I guess that's why I was like, surely this has to have been before Do My as Wells, because the Aes I would tell her, I mean, the, the wise ones would tell her, oh. right? But then you're right. There's just people in wheelie time world are like, it's better to sit on pieces of information for as long as possible before conveying them to one another. Yeah, I don't understand at all why the wise... Like, you have this setup here with Egg being the Amerlin where the wise ones could be like, oh, a person we trust is mm -hmm. on the proverbial throne. Mm -hmm. So now we might actually be able to accomplish something and start sharing information. But instead, they're like, hmm, well, Egg has been corrupted by the throne, and therefore we cannot share anything with her because she's part of the subset of people who we don't trust. And it's like, who is that benefiting, Robert Jordan, except that you're able to meet out information in yeah. a way that is preferable to you? I, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. And it makes a lot of sense hearing what you're saying. I just, when I was reading it, I was like so unanchored in time and space. I was like, Egg, where are you? Well, that's when just are the, you? <laughs> Why all the ice that I make me feel generally? What's happening? Who are all these women? There are just like wild dogs in the soldiers' camp. What's happening? Oh, I missed the wild dogs part. I mean, I don't think they're wild dogs. Egg just has a comment about how there was, like, a bunch, like, some of the soldiers were keeping dogs. But that's so cute. I know. And so I assume they're, like, feral dogs that they found. Can you and imagine Gareth Bryn's little soldiers are, like, keeping puppies in their yeah. oh, tents? that's so cute. Like, how I had, when I lived in the dorms in college, someone across the hall was keeping a prohibited puppy. Someone on my floor. The did RA. The yeah, there's always someone. Kitty. Yeah. Someone with a pet that's illegal. They're like, no one will find out. I'm like, everyone will find yeah. out. It barks. <laughs> <The> ding dong. <laughs> it's like trying to keep a cricket for a pet. <laughs> yeah, cats, I guess, at least are intended to be a little bit quieter, except unless you have our cats. Not if you have Tibble. <laughs> and not if Tibble can spread his infectious noise-making skills. Ugh. Poor Ed. R.I.P. Quiet Ed. Now he's loud Ed. <laughs> Quiet Ed was a good time. Um, ugh. okay. Anyway, I also just, Egg's plotline, and I know this is, like, how politics work, but it's also very frustrating to be, like, dealing with really important stuff, like, how are you gonna get Elena off the throne, and you know, the impending apocalypse, and she's also, like, Dealing with other dumb shit, like, I don't know. Like, does every does everyone have enough wagons? I don't know. It's just hard for me to deal with. Like, I like my good secretary characters who are dealing with the day-to-day -day logistics, but, like, I need someone who is committed to that, you know, in order for that to work for me. Yeah. Like, the secretary and the goblin emperor. Yeah, basically, I just want egg sequence to be more like the goblin emperor, where yeah. it's a rise to power that is predicated on... 
um, being kind to people. Yeah. <laughs> rather than That's being kind to people. Them. And, like, trusting people who are competent to do yeah. their jobs. Wouldn't that be nice? And Egg is just like, I can't trust anybody but me. This but girl boss is going to do it alone. Uno, me and also Swan and Leanne, my two previous abusers. And also... Sadrin and Foul Foul Lane Foul Foul Lane Foul Lane. Well, yeah. she is foul. I'm sure we made that joke before. Okay, sorry. You can get into plot summary. I'm sorry. I'm not really with it today. Oh, I'm not really with the plot summary either. I basically just keep thinking. Here's how I would edit it What's, if I were Robert yeah. Jordan's editor. None of the first chapter would happen. Mm-hmm. We would stick with what happened at the end of Lord of Chaos and have Mogadian's escape along with Loghain's quote-unquote escape Mm -hmm. manufactured by Egg uh, be in the past. Mm -hmm. Characters having already reacted to it. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily need to see Egg being like, oh no, Mogadian escaped, and then frantically telling Swan and Leanne, Mogadian escaped. Yeah. And then being like, okay, well... That sucks. We probably shouldn't have kept one of the Forsaken captive. We probably should have just killed her. And everyone would be like, yeah, dang, we should have done that. Like, who needs that? I've been I've been new for the last two and a half books, you know? Yeah. It really is just a series of Egg being like, Mogadine escaped. Swan and Leon, Mogadine escaped. Let's go into the world of dreams. Hey, I name and Elaine, Mogadine escaped. Yeah. Hey, wise ones, Mogadine escaped. It's we like, don't need to... <laughs> don't need to see any of this. Who cares? <laughs> She's gone. Okay. Yeah. I, like, I have been waiting for Mogadian to escape for the last two and a half books. Did you genuinely think she never would? Yeah. Like, what you- kind of idiots are you? You guys are supposed to be smart. That's what they keep telling me, but all evidence to the contrary. Yeah, show not tell, Robert <laughs> Jordan. I know Mogadian's not some, like, Houdini escape artist. Yeah. But she's one of the main bad guys. Yeah, like, you. I. You think Daddy Satan over there isn't going to be like, I need... I only have 13 named mm. followers, and they are getting picked off like flies. Yeah. I should probably, you know, preserve the resources that I do have. Yeah, literally in this chapter, Egg is ticking them off and is like, Ishmael, gone. Lanfear, gone. Robin, yeah. gone. I can't remember any of the rest of them now. Oh, Egg's accounting of the Forsaken is particularly funny when you consider that actually half of them have now been resurrected. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. It's a good point. She's like, well, uh, does she even account for Asmodean? I don't know. I don't think so. (laughs) She's probably like, Asmodean? Asmodean. She says, Ravin, um, Agnor, Balthamel, Belal, and Ishmael are dead. That's right. Which, according to... Maybe she does mention Asmodean, which according to her leaves Samael, Asmodean, and Demondred. Obviously, we know Asmodean is out of the picture. Rip to a real one. Yeah, rip to <laughs> our homie. <laughs> we also know that Agnor, Balthamel, and by the end of this book, Ishmael have all been resurrected. Ishmael gets resurrected. He is Moradin. Oh, that makes sense. I've been reading, literally, you guys, this is how uncommitted I am to this series. I cracked open Path of Daggers and was talking about some bitch named Moradin, and I was like, don't know who that is, don't care. <laughs> like, literally in one of my blogs, I was like, then some guy named Moradin shows up, who I know I'm supposed to know, but I just don't care. <laughs> so, I appreciate that <laughs> so, so much. Okay, Moradin. Then of the five female Forsaken, only Lanfear is dead. But don't worry, she too she will be will. resurrected eventually. So that leaves Mogadian, um, who obviously was in captivity, and Samaraj, Grendel, and Masana, who are all at large. And we don't even have any idea where Samaraj is. Oh. But like, yeah, dude, the, the the Dark One's running low on baddies. I mean, this is what happens when you make the foolish choice to only have 13 assistants, and you're trying to conquer the world. Yeah, the whole world's ahead of you, and you're like, I'm only gonna delegate to 13 people. What about, like, like, I understand that if it's, like, your round table, you know? Yeah. You have your 13 top knights, but then they ought to have secretaries. Where's the vengeful... Yeah. Where are all the vengeful people who served beneath Demondred? Yeah, we're like Dramo- Demondred's little thotties, you know? They could have a little bowling team. 
<laughs> all <laughs> the 13, there's a fucking competition. Yeah. <laughs> they have a softball competition yeah. every. <laughs> yeah, they all have little teams. And if you lose, you die. <gasps> oh, no. Like in Game of Thrones. <laughs> Actually, instead of softball, every year they pick a country to conquer. Oh my god! <laughs> Whoever gets there first. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is also just very funny to think that. I mean, I know this is like. I don't know if this comment really makes sense because, like, it feels like everyone throughout the series is tracking what the f- like our like human good guy characters will track where the Forsaken are, what they're doing. Like, Rand will have his little monologues about them. Egg has her little monologues about them. And I just find it very, like, strange that they think they would know at all what the Forsaken are doing. Yeah, that's something very much left to the reader to do. Like, I would do that because I'm neurotic. And because I'm like, Robert Jordan, you gave me 13 bad guys to keep track of. Of course, I, being who I am, I'm going to want to, at the beginning and end of each book, be like, all right, all right, who's left? Let me name them. Let me name them. Let me see who survived yeah. this round of combat. You know, but and this is not for the record. Our little softball team's jest was not a plea to Robert Jordan to create more bad guy yeah, characters. Yeah, no, that's the opposite of what I want. But also, it just frustrates me that like. I don't know, instead of the dark one being like, I'm really going to commit to the Forsaken that are left and those ones to become bigger and badder bad guys, I'm just going to resurrect a bunch of them. Yeah, it's very frustrating. I I am a um, abhorrent. What's the opposite of proponent? I want to say abhorrent. I'm against... sir. <laughs> I'm against the whole Forsaken resurrection thing. Oh, I agree. Like, we've talked before about how the Forsaken just, like, get nerfed, basically, at the end of the first book when Rand kills yeah. two of them. So it's like, you should have made your bad guys more intimidating, or, like, more powerful, scarier, more difficult to deal with, as opposed to just being, like, they can be killed off and resurrected whenever I want them to. Or if you get to this point where you're like, oh, I actually have four Forsaken left or whatever, they should be the four most powerful Forsaken who are then just given, like, armies of the dark or whatever. Yeah. It's very frustrating. Um, except for Asmodean. If they were to res- resurrect Asmodean, I would accept that one instance. Yeah, that would have been really funny if the Dark One, for some reason, was <laughs> like, like, no, he's days. No, no, second chance. <laughs> he amuses me like a court jester. <laughs> he's gonna stay. Um. <sighs> so anyway, yeah, I would delete all of this Mogadian crap that is prevalent throughout these three chapters. Um, I would probably just have it be a single brief scene where Egg is in her tent talking to Zwan and Shiriam yep. to update us on the reality of the politics in this camp. Um, as we are told, Egg is pretty much in the same situation she was at the end of book six. She is caught between multiple factions within the Hall of the Tower. Um, she is being quote-unquote puppeteered by Shiriam and Shiriam's group of girls, but also Ramonda and Lelaine, who are the top um, MPs over in Aes Sedai Parliament, <coughs> are also vying for power. And the only people Egg feels like she can count on are Swan and Leanne, and to a lesser extent Theodrin and Fowlane, uh, who she can only count on because they owe their rise to Aes Sedai Hood to Egg. Mm-hmm. So that comes with limits, obviously. Yeah. So basically, Egg has uh, limited allies, uh, very few resources, and it would be interesting to see her rise up from that, uh, but we're going about it in the least interesting way possible. In that, like, Egg can get what she wants from Shiriam and whatever, as long as she just rolls high enough on her intimidation check. Yeah. I guess. Like, there's no skill involved. Yeah. She's basically like, hey, Shiriam, what the fuck are you keeping from me? And Shiriam's yeah. like, um, oh my gosh, I can't tell you. Da 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 da. Also, I have the benefit of hindsight here, and I know Shiriam is, in fact, Black Aja. Yeah. So she could have just lied to Egg. I know. What? <laughs> Was she just so afraid of getting caught in a lie? I don't know. What a dumb, what a dumb 
thing for me to care about, but that is what I am left with in. No, but I mean, it's one of these things, like, if you're trying to play the Game of Thrones and weave these really complicated political webs, like, they better be air fucking tight, otherwise I'm just gonna be frustrated reading about them, feeling like you're just making up whatever rules you want at any given time. That's not how games work, (laughs) and it's not fun to read. Like, it just makes me feel like I... It's like playing Monopoly with an eight-year-old, you know? Yeah, it's like when I play Candyland with my niece, and she just draws a card and does whatever she wants. And for some reason, it makes me really fucking angry, but I can't yell at my five-year-old niece for not playing Candyland correctly. (laughs) That would make me an insane person. (laughs) But Robert Jordan is an adult. Yeah. Was an adult, excuse me, and should have been able to be like, all right, Egg is gonna do some detective work. Or something. Yeah. I don't know. Something actually substantive. Yeah. I don't know. We, we. If Egg didn't have allies in this camp, it was up to Robert Jordan to bring her allies. Yeah, or show her, like, making allies. Egg is apparently extremely politically savvy, and she's like, instead of focusing on building allies, I will just focus on using my four allies to the point of destruction. Well, and, like, Egg is very charismatic, so she's, like, so, but instead of Robert Jordan utilizing that and being, like, here's Egg using what she's learned from the wise ones to, um, enact power by making really balanced relationships with people that she can trust. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, being a little afraid that people are gonna betray her because that's what trust is. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Instead, he's, like, Egg's going to go on this long journey of trying to back enough people into corners that they'll have to swear fealty to her and she'll build her support system that way. And then for some reason, all those people who swear fealty to her, of them, it seems like none of them are ever like, I don't really appreciate being pressured into this position. Yeah. Instead, all of them are like, wow, I have come to respect her and I'm really genuinely on her side. And it's like, that wouldn't happen. Yeah, well, no, and it's... This is, like, to parallel that with everything that happens with, like, the Shanchen Oath that people have to take, Robert Jordan keeps presenting this form of power and power as obedience, basically, as getting obedience from people. He is not apparently interested in seeing, I don't know, I just don't think he's committed to doing the actual work of making a person be powerful and respectable because that's a lot harder than being powerful and just bullying your way into it yeah it's power via obedience rather than loyalty yeah and to your point like yeah i agree like if someone was like i'm going to bully you into making an oath i would first of all be like matt and be like an oath means nothing if i'm forced to take it so yeah i'll say whatever pretty words you want me to say it has absolutely no binding ties to me um but again, Matt is the only logical person in this world, apparently. Well, the I said I supposedly have to keep their oaths, you know, because of the thing. But, like, that would make me even angrier. Yeah, that's a good point. I'd be like, I'm already constrained by these three fucking stupid rules. I can't kill people unless they're threatening to kill me. What are you saying? You mean I can look a white cloak dead in the face and just not kill him? And not just burn him yeah. where he stands? You want me to just not kill the white cloak? ridiculous stupid no that's a good point it's like yeah you've been egg is not only bullying you she is taking advantage of um what makes you an eye Sedai. you know the whole point is they're like which she doesn't have to do yeah which she doesn't have to do because she doesn't she doesn't sworn on the oath rod or whatever the fuck um it's just yeah it's also really frustrating because robert like talking about characters who just get tanked i feel like egg's plot with the whole rebel thing could have been like egg is the coolest fucking character and instead robert jordan is like i'm going to turn her into a full-blown manipulator horrid person who just yeah only cares about getting the power she doesn't really seem to care how she gets it Yeah, one of Egg's most interesting character traits, I think, from the early series is that she's a deeply empathetic person, Mm -hmm. and she cares very deeply about learning and about expanding her worldview, and it's like, as soon as she's in the Amberlynn seat, that all just goes away. Yeah, it's like, it's, and like, it would be, 
like, it would feel intentional if there was more, like, discourse about what power does to people. But it, A, feels like it happens immediately. Mm-hmm. As soon as she's given the... the stole. stole. Um, and there's... Everyone around her responds as though Egg is doing the correct thing. And that she is just, like, becoming such a respectable, powerful, incredible leader. No one is ever like, this is a tiny dictator in the making yeah whatever those are my incoherent completely incoherent thoughts about egg her pl- it's just really disappointing because it's like i don't know like we have so many characters dealing with leadership that i wish we got to see her leadership arc turn out in a better way and well, i mean there i know there's still a long way to go like the crown of swords is like just the beginning of her time as amarlin but egg manages to weasel out of Shirium that uh, shortly after Salidar was established, Shirium and the others sent ten um, Aes Sedai back to the White Tower to establish themselves basically as moles and to spread the rumor that Loghain is a... was created by the Red Asha. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Um, Egg is like, wow, that's big news. I'm like... I don't really think so. I don't think so either. But if you, that seems like the obvious thing to do. Yeah. And I feel like the then obvious conclusion is, okay, well, who are Alita's spies in our camp? Yeah. That also seems like an obvious. Yeah. If anyone was using their apparently enormous brains. Anyone. No. (laughs) Like. Just a bunch of geniuses in here. Just (laughs) just unable to tie their shoes. Just talking constantly (laughs) about how the. The fucking furniture is collapsible. Yes, I get it. We're camping. I know. I'm like... It is very funny, though. Shut up about the decor, Egg. (laughs) Shut up about the decor. (laughs) It is very funny to imagine, like, these very regal isodized and, like, actual camping chairs. Like, that is very funny to me. But yeah, stop talking to me about your collapsible stools and maybe put some brain power into thinking... (laughs) <laughs> that there might be spies. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, then Moadine escapes, which Egg feels through her bracelet. She goes and looks, and lo and behold, Moadine has escaped. So, like we said already, Egg is like, Leanne and Swan, Moadine's escaped. And Leanne and Swan are like, ah, dunk. Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. <laughs> <laughs> Who could have seen this coming? And they're going to go look for a man. Keyword on man. No one, no one suspects Halima, which is the fucking point. Um, Egg is like, Swan, do you want to be taken off Gareth Bryn duty? And Swan is like, no, I don't. I can totally handle him. We learn some distasteful things, such as that Gareth Bryn has spanked Swan in the tradition of Perrin spanking fail, and all men in this series being able to spank women if they're misbehaving. Because we live in a patriarchy, and life is hell. Um, I'm just trying to think how I would, like, legitimately respond if I was in a situation where a man was like, you have misbehaved, and therefore I'm going to punish you via spanking. I think I would literally kill him. (laughs) No, I think so too. I think that would drive me to murder. (laughs) I think, like, whenever the, the show snapped... That would be me. Like, something yeah. so deep inside my psyche would just completely be obliterated, and I would start just murdering every man I saw. If a man was like, I'm going to use my physical, my greater physical power to literally spank you, not in a consensual, yeah. sexy way that we've discussed beforehand, but just because I think you need to be punished for your quote-unquote misdeeds. Yeah. Kill Bill Sirens, bud. Like, I am getting angry just thinking about it. I know. I literally, it makes me irate. But Swan is like, I have a big crush on Gareth Bryn. Any physical contact of his, even in the form of spanking, turns me the fuck on. Like, oh my god. We, we've talked, Swan is a prime example of Robert Jordan's insistence on the idea that men and women can flirt by pulling on each other's pigtails. Like, we're all in the sixth fucking grade. Yeah grow up. Whatever. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Then Egg goes for a little walk. She has a brief conversation with Leanne, who 
she also was just with, so I don't know <laughs> why they had to be separated and then come back together. Uh, and Leanne's like, well, I wouldn't worry about the embassy that's been sent to Rand. They're very competent. You need to stop worrying. And Egg's like, I really just want to, like, you know, be able to use the fact that we can teleport to go to Rand. And apparently it's some archaic law that the Amerlin can't put herself in danger unless, you know, they're in a war or something like that. So Egg doesn't have permission from Parliament, so she has to stay in the camp and not talk to Rand. And it's like, you can talk tonight to women Mm -hmm. who you know are with Rand. Mm Mm-hmm. You can be like, hey, Rand, tell Rand I'm the Amarillo seat now, and I think we should talk about it. Meet at X time and X place in Teleron Riyadh. He knows how to get here. I've fucking seen him. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, the fact that Egg is like, please don't tell Rand that I'm the Amarillo seat, because he'll like think that I'm in trouble and try and come rescue me. And I'm like, I don't think Rand, like Rand is a huge dumb fucking idiot, but if Rand heard that you were the Amarillo seat, I don't think his immediate thought would be, you're in danger. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, Rand is a stupid idiot who doesn't know how to respond to women, ever. Yeah. But if all Egg would have to be like is, hey, guess what? Elaine, nowhere in the vicinity. Avienda, nowhere in the vicinity. Yeah. And Rand would be like, all right, I can conquer my fear of women to go yeah. talk to Egg <laughs> for a minute. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, and she also is just like, please also don't tell Rand that I've sent Matt and Elaine and Nynaeve away. Oh, yeah. So now, oh, I don't think she even tells the wise ones that. Oh, yeah. She just thinks it. Yeah. She's like, I better not tell Rand that I've sent Matt. He'd be so mad. And I'm like, yeah, he would be fucking mad. I mean, yeah, he would be mad, but he also doesn't have a leg to stand on. Yeah, that's Everyone, pretty much everyone except for Matt has acted stupidly in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's just going where the wind blows him he has no choice in this you know it's so sad but the whole thing is just like it's just such a clusterfuck of bad choices and not in like an interesting way of like you watch well-meaning characters make bad choices and it ends up badly you know not in like a way where we are in later books to reflect upon these bad decisions yeah and be like perhaps i should stop sending matt random places perhaps I, Randall Thor, should let women make their own choices. <laughs> Again, the, yeah, there's never some tragic moment where Egg and Rand get together and are like, oh, Dunk, we put Matt in this terrible situation. Dur, 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 dur. If only we'd spoken to each other sooner about it. It's fucking stupid. No one ever says, I wish I'd spoken to you about this sooner, or I wish I'd told you the truth. No, never. So these are just bad decisions with no consequences. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. On her walkabout, Egg is encounters Nicola and Arania, oh, yeah. who are two randos who were on the same boat as Mogadian and continue to be two randos who I don't know why they're in the plot. Yeah. I, liter- I literally don't know why they're in the plot. These were two completely disposable characters. Mm-hmm. But Nicola's a novice and she wants to, I don't know, get taught more stuff. So she's decided, they've decided between them, a good idea is to blackmail the Amberlin seat. (laughs) That's smart. And Egg's like, hey, you dumb shits. What the fuck are you thinking? Yeah. And they're like, oh, uh, we weren't thinking, Mom. Sorry. Yeah. That wasn't a very good idea of ours. And she's like, yeah, no fucking way. Yeah. Are you kidding? Who do you think they're going to believe? Yeah. You two idiots or me, the Amberlin seat. (laughs) What the hell? whatever but now egg is stressed about there being a blackmailing situation and people knowing that elaine and nynaeve used to pretend to be Aes Sedai. yeah because that's apparently the worst crime you can commit <laughs> um you also held mogadian captive Are you maybe we should talk about the slavery eggs just like the amount of capital crimes i've committed in my three weeks tenure <laughs> as Aes Sedai knows no bounds However, however, I must I continue will. committing capital crimes for the sake of humanity. And Shut I absolutely up. will not be blackmailed. And I will not be blackmailed. How dare they? I have the ethical high ground here. <laughs> Don't try it, Anakin. I have the ethical high ground. 
Don't try it, Nicola. So Nicola and Arenia get set off with their tails between their legs, but don't worry, they'll be back, I'm sure. I don't even know why Nicola's so eager to learn. We do hear a very brief, like, thing where Nicola's like, you got taught super fast. And Egg says, well, what happened with me is called forcing. And in her internal monologue, she says, I that something Swan did, and yeah. Swan apologized for it. And I'm like, Swan didn't have much to do with your actual learning of the power. I, I don't know. know what you're talking about there. If I was going to blame anyone for your forcing, quote unquote, it would be the Shanshin. Yeah. After whom, like, w- we're all very well aware that after book two, when Edwin is a captive of those Shanshin, she is way more proficient in the one power. Yeah. And talks about just sort of being able to do things instinctively. Yeah. So, I don't know if that was just like a miswrite of Robert Jordan's, or if he was trying to slide in there. Oh, Swan did in fact apologize to Egg for sending them off after the- I don't know. I just think Robert Jordan really is ki- um, conducting some extreme literary gymnastics to not make the Shanchin be responsible for anything. Yeah, that's so sure true. That's how it feels to me, anyway, in book nine, but... Edwin then goes to bed, where she has one of her least empathetic sequences, like, sympathetic as a character, because she has this maid, um, who is helping her get ready for bed, and keeps saying dumb things. Edwin, in her head, is like, I hate this woman, she's such an idiot. Mm -hmm. Never does Edwin think... I know for a fact that this woman has been sent to spy on me. And she is obviously a woman who did not have many options. Mm -hmm. She was a refugee when she was found. How must it feel to get pulled into an Aes Sedai camp and be forced to spy on the Amaralyn Sea of all people? Mm -hmm. And not really have a choice in the matter. Yeah. Like, she is just so, uh, at least not out loud, but internally, she is incredibly cruel to this woman. Yeah. Which is just, okay, Egg, it's not like you were ever a peasant, you idiot. Yeah. Like, oh, how the mighty do fall, Miss Egg. Stupid. Like, you could maybe, again, it, yeah, again, it's just another example of how all of her, like, empathy and kindness and human decency seem to have just been completely drained away. Yeah, and she just, like, has no class consciousness now. The only character in this entire fucking series who has any class consciousness is Matt. Yeah, well, even, like, to diet, like, to backpedal for a second, the fact that Egg is like, I know I can stop Nicola and Arania from blackmailing me by pulling the trump card that I'm the fucking Amarillin seat. Yeah. And it doesn't even, like, cross her, like, I don't exactly remember the whole monologue because I just kind of skipped it, but it, like, doesn't seem to cross her mind to be like, it's actually pretty shitty that I can just send these women away and completely belittle them and um, render null their testimony because I am the Amarillin seat. Yeah. Like, it does not seem... Boy, the power imbalance here. Yeah. Sure is unethical. Yeah. She's just like, thank goodness I'm the Amarillin seat and therefore I can send these two girls away. Yeah. What And like, yeah, make them, like, convince them that nobody would believe them. <sighs> Stupid. Egg goes to bed. She goes into tell her on Riyadh. She sends Nynaeve and Elaine the message. Hey, um, there's a blackmailing situation here, so don't come back until you have the bull of the winds. Also, P.S. Modine escaped. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's not the first fucking thing you say. Um, and she's like, da 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 da. Then she goes to, uh, Amisa's dream and is like, hey, we need to talk. So she meets with all the wise ones. Uh, where they don't actually have a substantive conversation, except the egg is like, I'm the Amarillin seat now. And they're like, great, you're obviously a figurehead for them. And she's like, yep, you hit the nail on the head, but I'm not going to let that stand. I'm obviously going to take real power. And they're like, okay, good for you. And she's like, how's Rand? And they're like, (laughs) he's fine. He's doing really good. He's doing great. So good. And Egg's like, I'm really worried about the embassy that was sent from Solidar, <laughs> and I just want him to know that they are just there to tell him, hey, we're your allies, or whatever. And Amis is like, oh yeah, I wouldn't worry about the embassy and Rand. They swore fealty to him. He has nothing to worry about from them. 
Also, like, it is actually um, Marana's fault for overreacting. Yeah, it was fully Marana. Completely. So when everyone's like, don't worry, Marana is so competent. And it's like, the human meat grinder can be traced directly back to Marana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, further back, it can be traced to the nameless white yeah, cloak okay. who stabbed <laughs> that Aes Sedai. But you're right, Marana's overreaction to that did. The fact that she was just like, it seems a little strange for somebody to murder an Aes Sedai in an alley. That doesn't usually happen. Perhaps we should have a discussion about this. Was it Marana at that point? I feel like that was also the point where she, like, lost the reins oh, of power. Oh, you're right. So actually, right. yeah, it's not Marana's fault. It is Varen, Alana, yeah. and the rest of You're right. Fault. I'm sorry, Marana, sweetie. I slandered your name. So yeah, Marana is hyper-competent, but no one will let her do her yeah. fucking job. You're right. I'm sorry. The human meat grinder cannot be traced back directly to Marana. It can be traced back to the fact that Marana lost her job. <laughs> <laughs> Marana loses her job. <laughs> Arrow, human meat grinder. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Okay, so the <laughs> I you know, the wise ones are like, Yeah, we'll for sure tell Rand that everything's cool and like don't worry about it. And I was like, Thank you guys so much. It's so reassuring to have you on my side. And they're like A thumbs up, yeah. <laughs> thumbs up emoji. Scene. Message scene. <laughs> Red four forty eight. I don't even know if this is ever like addressed. If the ice, if the wise ones are ever like, "Hey, we have toe to you," you know, our big huge honor system about lying to each other. Yeah, that you had to, we had to whip you for like three hours because you yeah. lied to us. We just happened to omit the fact that the dragon reborn was kidnapped and kept in a box for upwards of mm, a week, and that might hmm, negatively impact his relationship with most of the Aes Sedai. We didn't think that was important for you, the Aes Sedai leader, to know. Don't worry about it. It's <laughs> no big deal. We all know Rand responds really well to things. Like, I feel like is the wise one's goal just we want to keep all Aes Sedai away from Rand and just have his advisors be wise ones? I wouldn't think that that's the case based on how they react to, like, say, Cad Swan. Yeah. They're pretty much like, yeah, sure, this lady can do whatever she wants. Yeah. You know, there's not any, like, direct interference with the wise ones. Yeah. So I don't really understand why this is here now. Well, yeah, it's also really strange because, like, I could kind of see the perspective. They're like, we're going to keep the White Tower Aes Sedai away from Rand based on what happened. Like, this is Egg. Girls, you trained her. Yeah, like, Egg is your adopted baby. Yeah, you talk to her all the time about how much you just want her to come back. Yeah, like, it seems, it just is very odd. And again, why I thought this happened completely pre-human meat grinder. So that's those <laughs> chapters. I'm sorry we keep calling Dumai as well as the human meat grinder. I think it's a better name for it. Then More egg. accurate. Oh, then Egg is like, time for really dreams. Real dreamsies. And then she just dreams about gay win. Gross. And how Gawain's life is in danger or something. I don't care. She does have a sexy dream about Matt pulling yeah. a firework out of the sky. That's, That's the only cool one. One of my favorite images in the whole yeah, series, to be honest. It. He just, like, reaches up and That's snacks. neat as hell. <clears throat> okay. Unfortunately, we're still with Egg next week. Even more unfortunately, Lan will also be involved. Oh, God. And that is deeply unfortunate, because that plot is rock, paper, fucked up. Yeah, you're so right. So... Uh, the good news is after that, we're in Ebudar. The also bad news is that I think we're first with my name in Elaine for a while, so it's just a lot of ups and downs, you know? Real roller coaster of emotions here. Whoopsie daisy. But thanks for listening. Um, and thanks to Glenn McKenzie for our theme song. Do you have anything to add? Um, thank you to everyone who follows us on Twitter. We now have officially a thousand followers. Oh, cool. I think it's like a thousand and three. Not holding my breath, it will last very long, based on Twitter. Seems pretty fickle. But, hey, celebrate the moment while it lasts. Sure, yeah. So, yeah, thank you, guys. You're the best. Do you have a sign-off? Yes, this one is so dumb. <laughs> um, I had to go to hand therapy this week, which yeah. is physical therapy for my hands. Um, and my physical therapist, like, there's not a lot you can do for your hands, right? So I got, like, fitted for my little braces, and then he was just showing me, like that I can't hold things in a particular way. You guys can't see this lovely visual, but it's like I can't pick things up like this. Yeah, she's making like a little bird shape. Yeah. You know, like a shadow. Yeah, so if I were to pick up Crown of Swords, like I can't pick it up like this. He's like, he called that the book hold. 
then he was demonstrating that I have to like curve my hand a little bit more in order to grab things. Claw. Claw. Yeah. And he was like, so if that one is the book hold, what? <laughs> Guys, what? It's like, what should we call this? And he holds his hands up like this. <laughs> She looks like she's about to grab two boobs. I'm just going to say it. I'm yeah, watching where this no, is going. So immediately I was like, you can't say boobs. You can't say boobs. You can't say boobs. So I just didn't respond. Just <laughs> because I was like, if I open my mouth, I will say boobs. And he was like, we'll call it just an arch hold. And I was like, okay, that sounds great. It's the boob hold though. <laughs> my hands are made for holding boobs. I mean, I wish. <laughs> just... Just a big handful of some titty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey. That's good. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.